Hello, and welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Nussbaum. Our very special guest and friend of ATP is back today, Mr. Will Johnson, the founder of Unite America First. Will, welcome back. We got a lot to talk about today, my friend. Yeah, I'm glad to be here, Barry. Let's start off with the new voter ID controversy. Um, maybe you can explain something to me. I, with my education, I'm just not smart enough. Hopefully you are. Um, you board a plane, you need an ID. You get a driver's license, you need an ID. You go to the bank to open an account, you need an ID. You wanna cash a check, ID. Go into a courtroom, ID. Go to jail, get out of jail, ID. Get into the army, ID. Blood work, lab work, go to the doctor. Pick up a prescription. There's like 300 things in America, if you're over 18, you must have an ID in order to progress. In other words, to finish the transaction. But the most important thing you can do as an American citizen is vote. Can you please explain to me, I'm just not smart enough to understand why is ID such a bad idea to prove well, you're Will Johnson and you want Will Johnson's ballot to vote. You know what, Barry? I think we're all in the same boat you're in. And it's not its not even about being smart or not. It's about who can be the most conniving, who can be the most, you know, trickster to get these ballots, these votes through. Now, it is absolutely insulting for these people to say that because I'm a black male, that I don't know how, that I can't vote or I don't know how to find a DMV, so I don't need to have an ID. I I wanted an ID when I was 15, so I can like think I'm you know about to start driving. You know, you remember when it was back in the day when kids wanted to learn how to drive? Not today, but anyways, I, I used to think, you know, an ID. What is the problem? Everyone has an ID, and you know one of the one of the things that you listen on there that just kind of like blew my mind. You have to have an ID when you go to jail. <laughs> so, so you're going to have someone commit a crime and they vote fraudulently, but they're not asking for an ID at that point. I mean, seriously, what kind of nation are we? This is ridiculous. Well, you know, in Georgia, I heard the secretary of state say, if you're one of those, I don't know what the number is, some really tiny number minority that you don't have an ID, They'll take you to get you an ID or they'll send somebody to help you get an ID because they want everybody, well, to behave like an adult because you can't be part of the economy without it. Yeah. And even though Georgia will help you go get it, Georgia is a racist state <laughs> for saying you need to have one. Now, you mentioned this article, this new Black Panther nation in Minnesota is has gone to Iowa to protest bills requiring ID in that state, and they're getting arrested like crazy because they're protesting the racism in Iowa. Is it really about race or is it something else? Well, it's a little of both. They're interjecting the race because that's what they can use to control people. It's ultimately about control. So, like I said, they interject the racism. And there, there's an incident that just took place in Iowa this, this weekend where a black male at the age of 20 got pulled over by police officers and come to find out he had outstanding warrants for his arrest. Conf a conflict took place. A police officer shot him. He jumped back in the vehicle, drove down a little bit, hit another vehicle. And now they're saying it's all racially related. Has nothing to do with that. It has to do with the police officers actually doing their job. Now, the thing that really got me is that he's 20 and he has outstanding warrants for his arrest. What are they teaching their children in the black community? They should be teaching them, hey, you need to stay out of trouble. When I was younger, anytime I got a ticket or got any kind of uh, confrontation, not even a confrontation, any kind of interaction with the police department, I dealt with it. I dealt with it immediately. 
I didn't hesitate. I didn't wait. I went down to the courthouse. I went and paid my ticket. I went, and went ahead and got it out of the way. So then that way, never come back on me. And I always kept my paperwork after I paid my ticket. I kept it in my vehicle so they could never say that I didn't pay it. Well, you were raised right. Unfortunately, it's a different generation. So tell me why this isn't racist. You have white politicians like the president of the United States, Will, saying black people, I, I'm not making this up, are not smart enough to navigate on the internet to understand how to get an ID, therefore requiring them to get an ID is racism. <laughs> I mean, you know what? There's a video floating around where this guy was walking. I think it was in Brooklyn, New York, if I'm not mistaken. But anyways, there's a white guy asking white liberals, is it racist to have asked black people for an ID when they go vote? And he also asked the question, do you think that black people know how to get to the DMV? And overwhelmingly, these white liberals said, no, they shouldn't have to have an ID to vote because they have a hard time finding the DMV or they're not privileged enough to get to the DMV or they're just not capable because they have victim issues. So then he went over to the black community and asked the same questions and they all looked at him like he was crazy. What are you talking about? Yeah, the, the DMV is right down on 15th Street. I mean, seriously, they look at us like we can't do anything. And Joe Biden is the cream of the crop. He's the straight, he's, he's, Joe Biden has demonstrated how racist he is towards the black community. And a lot of black people overlook it to give him a pass. It makes me think about during the slave days when you had the white man in the big house, they gave him a pass for being racist because he was the white man in the big house. The Democrats do the same thing today. Joe Biden gets a pass because he's a white man in the big house. Well, speaking of racism, this is blowing up in both white and black activists' faces, this defund the police thing. There are demonstrations now going on in a number of cities where in some cases they've cut the police budgets so badly, you'd be better off writing a letter to the police department hoping someone will come out than calling on the phone because there's nobody to send. And now where the budgets have been radically cut, Will, crime, oh, shock alert, has gone insane. And you can't walk the streets in some cities because the bad guys know there ain't no cops coming. So it's open season on the helpless people who are unarmed. Do you still see this defund the police movement staying with us? Oh, of course it is. It's part of the agenda. I'm in Texas. Texas, of all places, you would think that they were they would stick to conservative values, stick to making sure that America remains first. But in Austin, Texas, they have defunded the police department so much that crime has risen over 2,000%. You're 100% correct. Oh Over 2,000%. The crime rate is so bad there, it's almost like we're living in a fantasy world where you have Batman and Robin and the Joker and the Penguin, all of them are in control. They're destroying the city. They're destroying everything. They're destroying lives. And then on top of that, the left, they try to act like there's nothing wrong. Nothing's out of the ordinary. This is completely fine. And all of this is by design to remove the police department. So when they implement, my opinion, when they implement the ultimate tyranny that they want to bring onto the American people, there's going to be no one there that took an oath to stop it. God, I hope you're wrong. Um, you and I both. I, I honestly, I'm afraid you're right, Will. And what really shocks me is the movement is not declining. It's, it used to be, well, the police are like Trump and they're all racist. Even black cops are racist. So they all have to go. And we want to call social workers and counselors and psychotherapists that can come out and counsel you that you really shouldn't rob banks. You shouldn't really sell crack. 
You shouldn't bop people over the head with your gun on the street corner. You shouldn't kill Uber person. eat drivers. What's that? <laughs> I said you shouldn't kill Uber eat drivers. Sorry. Because <laughs> of your phone. Right? Yeah. Uh, unreal. And yet, and yet, the movement isn't going away. You know what? Let me let me say this if I can. There's a, a police officer out of California that went to, there was an event at a, at a church where they were trying to stop the church from exercising their, uh, their civil liberties, their religious rights. Well, he was just there attending it. He wasn't, he was a police officer. He wasn't in uniform. He's in plain clothes. He was just there supporting the church. Well, the woke supremacy docks him and found out that he was a police officer. And as an ending result, they were able to get him fired. They were, he didn't do anything wrong, nothing wrong. He didn't hit anyone. He was just there. But because he was there supporting the church for their civil liberties, their religious rights, they were able to get him fired. And now they're celebrating the fact that they were able to get another police officer fired. This is ridiculous. They are literally going to remove all of the police department's officials, the police officers throughout the nation. So then that way we can have total chaos and this is, this. imagine this, this is on the heels of the George Floyd case. If they get, if they don't convict him, we can, I, I'm willing to bet, and it's probably a guarantee that we're going to see violence throughout the entire country. And the police department is not going to have enough police officers there to combat it. So what's the next step? I think personally, they're going to call in these blue hats. You can see these blue helmets marching on the streets of the United States of America. That's just my opinion. I don't want it to happen, but if I'm right, we're going to see that within our lifetime. If you're talking about blue helmets, I assume you mean the United Nations, right? Of course, of course. Yeah, that that over my dead body, if I had a choice, and I assume you feel the same way, mm -hmm. it would be a complete destruction of the sovereignty of the United States as a independent nation among the nations, and it would be the beginning of the new world order. Not a pretty picture, Will. Yeah, Not I don't. Picture. Yeah, you're right. I don't want it to happen, but I have a I have a strong suspicion that that's one of, that's part of the plan. Thanks for coming on today, Will. Uh, I want to remind everybody: Will Johnson is at Unite America First on Facebook and on the web. Check him out. He's terrific. And for all of you out there in ATP land that haven't subscribed to American Truth Project yet, you can do it simply on your cell phone by texting the word truth and sending it to the number 88202 push send. You'll be signed up for free. You'll get all of our stuff, including the terrific Will Johnson, absolutely free on your cell phone. For Will, I'm Barry Nussbaum. Thanks for joining us on ATP Report.